So guys, it's Isopa, and this is a deck review of something that me and chat made, I believe, like a day ago, actually. It's pretty new. Um, this deck started off with the idea of creating a bait deck, and uh, that, would, that would work in this meta. And uh, it was pretty hard because the bait decks that were good before, like 3.3 bait or um, hog bait and stuff, like I feel like it's not that strong right now. With the rise of uh, Tornado, Graveyard, Night Witch especially. Um, so I eventually came upon this idea, this weird deck, and it's been taking on different transformations. I feel pretty confident in this one. Um, the original deck list was Fireball instead of Rocket. But uh, let's say like you don't have the Night Witch or you want to use this deck. Um, what you do need though, however, is the Goblin Barrel, the Princess, and the Dark Goblin. Uh, the princess is not really replaceable with the night witch you can i would say you can replace the night witch with something similar to it like knight or valkyrie uh and then for the spell it can either be i believe rocket fireball or poison i think that rocket is probably the best just because you only use one killing spell and a lot of times when i was using fireball it was cheaper it was faster but the thing was that I always barely like barely missed the damage threshold and I couldn't ever like spell them out with like a log or a zap or anything. And I feel like Rocket uh, synergizes a little bit better with just um, Mortar, NATO, Goblin Barrel, Bait decks, sort of like that. Okay, so this deck is super tricky um, in that it has a whole bunch of like really funny attacks that can happen you have a lot of combos that you can use like dark, uh, dark goblin ice golem ice golem goblin barrel uh mortar push with night witch princesses in the opposite lane all this can be put in with a goblin barrel and you, you can interchange a lot of pushes the thing about this deck though is that you can play into another person really easily uh when you take a look at this deck you would call it like a mortar bait right um in reality, the deck is not really a mortar deck. It's not a traditional mortar deck in that mortar decks want to just be placed down and uh, be defended, right? Like, um, you drop mortar, then you drop ice golem, then you drop knight, then you drop uh, archers and all of this stuff. This deck doesn't really work like that. Uh, the, the function of the mortar in this deck is more to defend, distract, and to put more pressure on the opponent. Uh, as you see the, that I do in uh, my replays. <clears throat> Something I kind of want to get through to you guys before we go into these replays. I have uh, four of them. Golem, Graveyard, Lava Hound, and even another Graveyard. Um, Bowler Yard, which this deck does have a little bit of trouble with. Uh, is that you really want to abuse this deck's range. Um... By abusing this dex range, I mean using the Dark Goblin, using the Mortar, using the Princess, especially to their like fullest capability. Uh, so I'm actually just going to open this up really fast. We'll open up a training match here and print this out. Open up paint really fast. All right, so here's a picture of the arena. I'll try and open that up. And there is like this concept of like the middle, the middle, right? Um, for people who have been playing longer, the the middle of the arena is pretty easy to see. Like you'll know uh, which way units are split. You know whether they go to the right or the left. Um, with this deck, because you have such long range units, you really have to abuse this. So the middle of the arena kind of looks like this. Go straight down the middle. Uh, let's say like you put a princess, let's say there's a push coming this side. Like, you know, there's a mega minion right here. It's coming this way. Um, you can play princesses here. So that you can abuse her range and attack from the left lane, so she's safe from getting spelled out this side or anything along those lines. 
in the, in the same vein, you can also use the Dark Goblin the same way. Uh, just a little bit closer because the Dark Goblin doesn't have... <coughs> doesn't have as much range as the Princess. So the Mega Minion comes in, the Dark Goblin is right here, um, Dark Goblin will shoot over and then he'll attack to the left side. You really want to be abusing this uh, side lane, these side lanes, because this deck is not a full-on offensive, just push one lane kind of deck, although it can happen. Um, really, it's, it's a lot of like smoke and mirrors. You want to be accruing a whole bunch of value by using these cards that are very difficult to kill, like Dark Island Princess, uh, Ice Golem, and stuff like that, to put pressure on the map the more princesses you have on the map the more dark goblins that you have on the map the more pressure that you have across your board and this uh, actually starts to allow you to play mortars it's not um i mean it, you can play mortars at the bridge and whatever like normal if your hand dictates it or your hand says that you can do it but really you build up pressure through your bait cards and then you can start putting pressure with mortar you can rock it um not to mention that this deck is has like insane defense already with the NATO uh with the Night Witch. Okay. So to reiterate, we're probably we're gonna look over these replays and then I'll probably go through like a few or maybe just one grand challenge game depending on the time that we have. Uh let's take a look at the this Golem Night Witch game here. Let's turn down the volume of that a little bit. Not a lot. So in these games, what you're going to see me do is I don't just throw cards willy-nilly. I will throw cards at times to pressure an opponent into saying you can't just build a push the way you want it. If he puts a golem at the back, then I throw Goblin Barrel with uh, Night Witch to the left side. If he plays Pump, then I put pressure on him or I rocket it out. If he does this and this and this, I always have a response in terms of pressure here the you cannot let them build a huge push like you should never let them build a huge push with this deck because you have so many tools to attack he puts the pump i rock it <coughs> now we're both just sitting here waiting to see who makes the first move uh with this deck it's it's i i usually feel like the hard part is um finishing the game and opening the game uh, typically because of damage and because of how this, this deck sort of cycles. When I play princesses, I try <clears throat> and tend not to play things into the princess lane because people always log out princesses or put pressure, um, take out princesses like that. Like that. He actually does miss the log here, which is pretty big. Dark goblins behind. Uh, ice golems are huge. He's actually forced to lightning the mortar and the dark album because he misses the princess <laughs> and you see how like we're really we're really abusing the range of our cards we use the uh the the ice golem by understanding that there's a middle line here if we put the ice golem to the right of the middle line then it then it drags the mega minion and then just like that we have another push because the Ice Golem comes in, we can throw a, dar uh, a Goblin Barrel, and unless he has a spell or something, he can't really clear it that well. He ha he's forced to use um, an Electro Wizard, and by him playing Electro Wizard, it lets us build up another push, because now we can drop Night Witch on him, and we have the option of just throwing a Dark Goblin behind this as well. I don't hear, which is fine, because I decide to instead build up more pushes. I use the Dark Goblin to clear, and I can set up a mortar. He logs it out. Every time they log your cards out, your Princess and your Goblin Barrel become stronger. Like Alternately, this is a log bait deck, so the more that you bait out cards, the stronger those cards become. He logs out the Princess. My Dark Goblin becomes stronger. My Goblin Barrel becomes stronger. He doesn't have like a really good response. Every single time he plays this, uh, this, these cards, these Mega Minions, it becomes really difficult for him. 
so here too, when you're defending, uh, you really need to be splitting your cards. You really need, like, this comes so into play with abusing your range. You never see me play my Dark Goblin and my Princess together. L look how far apart my cards are. My Princess is all the way to the right. My uh, Mortar's all the way to the left. I know that if he Lightnings, um, then he can't get, like, all of it really comfortably. He's forced to just take two. Now my Dark Goblin's in, uh, all the way to the left. He's forced to log that too. And we have so many options in terms of defense. He logs out one unit, I can play another unit. And now I know that he doesn't have log, I have this another push built up. I'm, out, I'm able to just throw another goblin barrel. <clears throat> that goes a little bit uncontested. So I'm never playing the princess together into the same lane. This princess goes to the left. This princess goes to the right. He logs everything out. I get another push. Instant, just more, 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 more and more pressure. Just more and more pressure. <clears throat> we get to a point where we don't even need to rock it. Just because he doesn't have the appropriate responses for us. I really do need to turn down this volume a little bit more. Okay. So let's go into this Graveyard Exit game. Uh, <clears throat> one of the decks that this one this one definitely has trouble with is Graveyard. Uh, it, does, it definitely does much better against Graveyards that do not use Log. <coughs> Uh, which a lot of graveyards right now, like, they don't run log. They run XC, NATO, Skeletons, um, Poison, you know. The decks that run log, you'll have trouble with because they'll be able to log out a lot of your um, offending Goblin Barrels. But against these decks, you'll see me put just so much pressure on them because they're forced to NATO uh, one or two pushes and they can't really defend, like, the other, the other beat cards. So uh, lately, because of the prevalence of Tornado, I'll usually throw my Goblin Barrel to the bottom right or bottom left of the tower, where they can't be NATO to the tower, just like this, just to test them. He puts down Archers, he puts down Night Witch. I'm pretty confident this is a Graveyard deck. So when you're defending Graveyard with this deck, <clears throat> because there's no, like, your 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 tank your knight knightish tank to defend graveyard is usually going to be night witch um you also don't have like a zap or a log to clear out the uh graveyard so you have to be really careful with how you <coughs> set up your units um princesses dark goblins actually do help graveyard a lot like uh as long as they're not on top of it so you'll see me play princesses um to help clear with her aoe uh, a lot of times you will take a lot of damage though it, especially like how he kind of does it fortunately bats kind of spawn and all the spawns are at the front of the tower so i take a lot of damage there but you'll see that because this deck use has a mortar it has all these offensive options he's never really able to push on me because he doesn't have like a, a fail safe defense like log this damage that he gets on me is pretty much the damage he gets on me throughout the rest of the game. I don't really defend the mortar because there's nothing in my hand to really defend with. Like, what am I going to do? Drop a Dark Goblin in front of a mortar? It doesn't really work. <laughs> I know he doesn't have log, so we're able to start putting a lot of pressure on him. With Dark Goblin, Ice Golem pushes. I play princesses to the left because I don't want him to poison to the right. Even though typically I would like to play princesses to the right. We're, protect we're protecting our princesses. You want to protect your princesses as much as possible. Just like with any princess decks. 
the more princesses you get up on the board, the more they have to respond to it just like this. He doesn't want to play this Night Witch down. He kind of does. He wants to use it on offense, but instead he's having to use it on a princess. <clears throat> now he's forced to drop an executioner for this princess. Princess that's still alive. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, for this princess. Because he poisons this side because of all the pressure that the mortar is putting. He can't graveyard the right side. Or if he does graveyard, he knows that he's not gonna. I'm not gonna be taking a lot of damage. All this pressure, I'm, I'm using his tornadoes. Um, I'm getting out his units. He can't really just do like a push. Now he's forced to push on the left side, which he definitely doesn't want to. Uh, I'm placing Dark Goblins outside of range of graveyards. And we're just accruing more and more units over time. With Mortar, you don't really... It's not like Expo where you have to rely on it connecting for a full duration. If, if your Mortar gets just like one or two shots on the tower, that's actually really good. Think about Thinking about that, that's like two... Uh, or three just like goblin barrel swings. It's just a whole another unit to help you end games with. Yeah, just like we said, on the right side that was most that was the most damage he got. Because it was the early game he was able to do a push. But the entire time we just kept putting pressure, more and more and more pressure on him. Uh next replay we have Lava Hounds. This isn't your typical Lava Hound deck. This is a this is a minor Lava Hound with a pump, but uh, I can guarantee you that if this was a Lava Hound balloon, it would still have worked out the same way. Uh, when it comes when it comes to Lava Hound, like I think it's a little bit weaker now because of the Night Witch. Uh, if you put a Night Witch at the back and just let it build up, bats will actually just take care of the entire Lava Hound. It's kind of crazy. Uh, not to mention that you also have Tornado, um, Rocket, Princess, Dark Goblin. You have so many answers for Lava Hound. I really don't think that this deck has any problem with it. So just like you see here, I'm not really defending my mortar. My mortar has already connected to the tower and is, is about to give me like three shots. <clears throat> so you don't see me you don't see me protecting it. It's not like a regular mortar deck in that way. I'm controlling him with pumps, uh rocket, with princesses. He's forced to spend elixir when he really doesn't want to. And we're just like this, we're we're also using that middle line again. Um the dark the the damage is on the right tower. We don't really want the dark goblin to go to the left. We want to abuse the middle range here. The so we put the dark goblin to the right and he takes out the night, night witch on the left, goes to the right, puts more pressure. If we wanted to, I feel like a lot of uh improvement that I still need for this deck is just like my split second decision, um timing to build pushes. I, I think I'm too slow here, and I could have just put down an Ice Golem here, and it would have instantly become another push. He would have been forced to use Dark Goblin here. I mean, a uh, Goblin Gang here. Instead, I miss out on the opportunity, and I'm forced to play a little bit more uh, defensively. Now I know he has NATO. He puts the Lava Hound at the back, so I'm gonna wait, uh, see if he has the balloon. I drop the Night Witch, and here I'm like waiting to either be spelled out or something along the line. I'm putting the uh, Princess into the other lane, <clears throat> Mortar to drag away the Lava Hound. The bats are actually doing good work. I only had one bat really, but it's fine. And my defense is like everywhere, right? Uh, I have a princess over here on the left lane. The princess forced him to play minor to the princess, or so he wouldn't even have been able to take it out. Uh, I play Dark Alvin all the way to the right. I play uh, Mortar in the middle. Like all of my units are spread out. You really, really have to be sure that you're placing your units in the right places. Or else you just give too much value to your opponent, and then you lose out on a whole bunch of. Uh, Attacking units that you could use on counterattack, counterattack basically. I play Princess into the bottom left. She's basically like insurance. Uh, Night Witch at the bottom. 
I set the mortar up. There's my Dark Goblin. He actually doesn't have enough to go ahead and Lightning because he's placing too many units. Tornado is super good. All over, like, our princess is still retained. Like, we're still getting value out of her. He's having to keep on minoring her. And it never really allows him to form his, like, big push that he's always wanted. Oh, by the way, uh, with this mortar positioning as well, can't kind of can't see it because of this 180. But uh, what I'm doing here is sort of similar to what I what people do with mortars against hog riders. If you play it at the bridge, they'll still uh, drag in units because mortar is pretty tanky. It can survive for a long time. Um, you, if there are no ground units in somewhere in this vicinity, the mortar will still take shots at this opposing tower as long as you line it up correctly, just like that. And our kill range is 493 because we have rocket. So we're really abusing this. He's forced to lightning because of all the pressure at the bridge. And we get to we get to rocket range. Never really had like he did have opportunities to lightning, but if he did lightning, I am pretty sure, 100% sure that there is no way he still breaks through. <clears throat> if anything, it becomes easier for us to defend because he doesn't have as many units. And because he doesn't have as many units, we just drop, uh, we just drop more units of ours and just go into another counter push. Uh, Alright, so that was our Lava Hound replay. Let's take a look at Bowler Yard. Bowler Yard, you'll find, is going to be pretty hard just because of bowlers. Um, I think that Giant Lightning is actually pretty easy with this deck because you can pull Giants, you can do all this stuff. But with bowlers, bowlers are <clears throat> singular and uh, it's pretty hard to kill them before they take out your mortars, before they take out all your units. But just like before, we're not, <clears throat> we're not really a mortar deck. Uh, we're kind of like a mortar deck in disguise. Really, we're trying to build value through our log bait units and then play mortars on defense or offense as uh, we kind of see fit here comes the bowler i know i can't really defend it so i'll just use the princess to kind of chip away i'm unfortunate i do play the dark goblin on top of the graveyard which kind of screws us over for a while and we take a huge huge points of damage just like in our other graveyard game, typically, I, I don't think he, this guy has log either. Yeah, he doesn't have log. I let the baby dragon on my tower because I know that I need the elixir to start pressuring him. Hit the mortar at the bridge. I believe I dropped the dark goblin here. I feed into him even more, and this is like the problem against the bowler. It's really hard to take it out in time, unlike other units. So try and not do what I did there. Uh, if the bowler, the Dark Goblin takes a, it has good DPS, but it's going to take a while for it to kind of do his damage. He actually does tornado the Night Witch to the tower, which is kind of hilarious. I know he doesn't have enough to do graveyard push, so I'm actually just going to defend this as little as, uh, as possible. So I just dropped the Ice Golem. leaking a little bit i play the princess putting her down as insurance again <clears throat> defensive mortar because i know that a graveyard is coming and i throw the goblin barrel and i rock it the best way to take care of bowlers is definitely to rocket them if they ever put them at the back just rocket it it's too worth it it's too worth it I've been starting to figure out that against these matchups, against these uh, graveyard matchups that have bowler, that have like these huge tank units, like giant graveyard, right? I find that it's more. I I've been finding it's more important to play 
defensive mortars, definitely. Defensive mortars help you so much uh, in buying a lot of time for your units. And they're so cheap, and your deck is so cheap that you can definitely cycle it back to another if you really need to use it on offense. Can't let this princess die. I put the ice golem. Goes into another push just like that. Dark goblin. Here's another mortar. He puts the bowler. So I punish the bowler by putting uh, by placing the by placing the uh, goblin barrel. Doesn't play his ground units next to his tower, so the uh, mortar does get a shot. See how important, like, just one or two mortar shots, just like that, the mortar locks onto the tower. And the mortar will give us the damage to rock it here. And we're able to clutch out a game against a really difficult deck to play against. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do a live game. We'll just do one live game. Because <coughs> I don't want this to go on for too long. One or two, I, I, I don't know, depending. Um, let's tornado this hog to our king tower. Activate king tower is pretty strong, although those skeletons do get on the tower. Fortunate. Should have distracted it. I thought that the skeletons would have gone in, but it doesn't. He does go ahead and log. I need damage right now or pressure, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up my mortar. This looks a lot like uh, Hog Lightning. We're gonna protect our Dark Goblin here. Put more pressure on him. I believe he still logs. I know he has NATO. Okay. So we're throwing the Goblin Bear all the way into the corner. He does NATO it back. <clears throat> we do have Tornado in our hand. We want to NATO Hogs to the middle now. We'll put Princess down at the bridge because I need damage. Tornado. Okay, so what does he have? He has Lightning, Hexy, Night Witch. We'll set the Mortar. He puts a Night Witch at the back. I will rocket the Night Witch. I can't get the Hexy, that's fine. <coughs> I need to be careful here. I'm going to set the Ice Golem down. He has his Hog Rider. I need NATO pretty badly. I might get a hit. He does log me out. I'm going to Goblin Barrel. This gets Tornado to the tower. This one's going to be a hard game. Put up Mortar again. Should get a hit here. We can't really defend this. He logs. I'm gonna Goblin Barrel. We got a lot of damage. Princess. I'm gonna give him value here with Lightning. But if he Lightnings this, if he Lightnings all this right here, that's fine. Because he's not Lightning over here. Let's do it. He might... He's gonna log here. We're looking for our damage right now. We need to tornado this princess over here because he might lightning the tower. Our tower is within rocket range. We can rocket the game. <coughs> okay, that, that might have not been good because I don't, I don't think we played that very well. We'll do one more. We'll do we'll do another one. 
Hog Lightning is pretty strong. What I've been also having trouble with is like these Cycle Hog decks, just because sometimes I really don't want to mortar Hog Riders anymore with Tornado, and they can just outcycle NATO at times. <clears throat> okay. Uh, two options I could have started. I could I can play Princess or I can just drop Goblin Bro. Actually, I or I can just play Ice Golem. So, like I said earlier, I don't really like to play things into the Princess lane. Because it's very easy for them to just take out Princess and something else. So I'm actually just going to play Dark Goblin, play Ice Golem, and now I have like a little mini push here. Whatever he kind of defends this with, I'm going to set up a counter. See what he does there. Does he spell it out? He does spell it out. I am going to drop my mortar here. It'll get a unit. I'm not really. I don't really have anything in my hand to stop a unit from coming out. But that mortar actually does connect here. I'll play princess for those two archers. Ice golem to tank all of this here. He has zap. Now he has to deal with this side, and I'm whatever. Okay, he logs here, so. Let's go Dark Goblin, Night Witch, and then Goblin Barrel. He can't really take this out comfortably. He does have level 7 skeletons, it's unfortunate, but I think I think it's still fine. Princess is in the other lane, just like again. And depending on if I need Ice Golem, I'll play it. The Princess is getting more and more value. And is he going to log this out again? Because if he logs it out again... He's actually just going to let that kind of go on the tower. We don't want to be leaking elixir. Play mortar down. Uh, I guess he gave up. Hmm... Another unconvincing game. I guess we'll just go into another one. <coughs> I said like one game, and now we're we're into our third game. Oh man, I might as well just make a. Uh, Grand challenge run of this deck. Okay, he puts down the Elixir Collector right away. I can't really ignore that. Time to put on pressure. Damage. This looks to be a uh, golem. Okay. The bats will spawn, will do damage. I'm fine. I don't. I really don't want to overextend because I need this rocket for his next pump. I can't do anything about his first pump because of my starting hand. That's okay. I'm gonna throw Goblin Barrel because I know he just used his log. Throw my rocket because I need to take out that pump before it gets one elixir. <coughs> and now I should be behind like two, three elixir. Let's play just our ice golem here, and we'll tank the baby dragon. I'm sure, well, yeah, I'm, I'm like 100% sure this is a golem deck. The golem comes out, let's, let's do this. Instead of playing the mortar on the opposite side, we'll start off with a princess back here. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like to defend. We'll play the night witch at the back. I know this gives him lightning value, that's fine. We're going to mortar over here. We are going to have to tornado everything though, however, just because of all the units at the back. Instead of him lightning, he put down a whole bunch of units. And we'll play the Dark Goblin all the way to the right. So the Dark Goblin will clean everything up and you don't really want to like, you know, lightning a Dark Goblin. We'll probably play uh, like Skeletons or Baby Dragon for this. That's totally fine. We'll put the Princess into this lane. Now he wants to pump, right? 
He logs. Let's do Night Witch Goblin Barrel because he logs right there. And he pumps, which is super greedy. He's going to take a lot of damage here. Lose his pump on top of that. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to Dark Goblin here. I'm going to Mortar over here. Ice Golem to protect. And a Night Witch. Let's tornado everything all the way to the corner with the Dark Goblin. Let's play a Mortar all the way up here. Uh, we need a Night Witch over here. And we need NATO. Pull everything together to clean up. Really kind of messy. But it works, it works. Okay. It's Dark Goblin, it's Mortar, it's Princess. We'll drop Ice Golem and Night Witch, because we need to take care of this stuff. Dark Goblin, over here. Will that pop on our tower? No, it won't. We have a lot of units living. He, uh, Lightnings, we'll go ahead and Goblin Barrel. I think he's just trying to spell us out, but... Unfortunately, he used too much elixir, and we're going to be able to kill him off before he's able to get off his damage again, and GG! Well played. Normally, I would have, you know, like at that point where I say, oh, here I defend, um... I kind of wanted to show you just like how what the fence looks like in in a deck like that. You see me just place all the these units so far away from each other because I really am abusing their range. Um, but you uh, in that spot, I would I would normally just play mortar all the way to the left and just be comfortable with defense because like the deck cycles pretty re like really fast. Uh, I'll I know I'll be able to get back to my mortar. Um, and or i could just like tornado everything to the king tower uh while you while defending his support units yeah uh i think that that's a pretty good comprehensive deck review of this i would say that like i, I am using this on ladder a little bit um it's not that detrimental to have a level 7 goblin barrel when you have other bait cards in your deck like princess and dark goblin it's not that bad when they can uh just yeah it's, it's not that bad so if you you can use this on ladder um it's better in challenges it's a really unique deck i think it's anti-meta it's good against the things that are good right now like three musketeers uh three musketeers golem like you just saw and night witch graveyard with no log log graveyard poison is probably the hardest for this deck but you can still win it by rocket cycling them out and if your defense is really on point uh if you like this uh comment like subscribe and yeah, tell me, tell me what you guys want to see later. Thank you guys for watching.